Hi, I'm Tim Berglund with Confluent. This is an introduction to Confluent Platform Security Part 3, Encryption, Authentication, and Authorization. In Part 2 of this series, we got the CP Demo project set up and running. Now let's take a look at how it's been secured and how we can interact with its security features. First, let's observe the registered ports and their associated protocols that the brokers are listening on. Here, I'm going to look in the log on broker one for the phrase registered broker. It's just grep for that. As you can see, the broker is listening on a few ports. We have port 9091, which is the SASL authentication and SSL encryption port. So that's SASL over SSL. Remember, SASL is an authentication protocol and SSL is, as we know, encryption. So we're using both encryption and enterprise grade authentication on this port. Then we have port 29091. That's SASL SSL host. That's the host version of uh, that previous port, meaning that applications outside of the Docker container can see the services on port 9091, which is otherwise 9091, only available inside the container. Then we have 10091, the plain text port. This is a totally unsecured port that anyone can connect to and do whatever they want. Uh, that kind of defeats the purpose of the secured ports, obviously, but it makes sense to have it around for the demo. It's kind of a nice little sanity check that you can fall back on when you're trying to figure out what to do. In production, you wouldn't do this. Finally, there's port 11091, which is an SSL only port. It's encrypted like the SASL SSL port, but we're not using SASL to authenticate on this port. Now, let's try one of them out. Suppose I wanted to list all of the consumer groups. I can connect to port 10091, not provide any credentials whatsoever, and everything is fine as you see here. Uh, now, let's try the SASL SSL port on 9091. If we just change the port number in that previous command, note that we now get a failure, which we would expect. This is good. To make it actually work, we'll need credentials. Now, it so happens that I have some lying around in a config file, but hey, for now, I pass those credentials into my consumer group listing command, and we see that now it works. I know you probably want to see what's in that file, so here's that. Next, let's look at authorization. We defined a set of users to be super users who are authorized to do whatever they want with all of the broker resources. So let's look in the broker log for the string super underscore users and see what we can find. So you can see the various principal names, or as we might more easily put it, usernames, who are authorized as super users. We have client, schema registry, broker, and this shady character called anonymous. That one is for the plain text port we left set up, because obviously in this demo app, our risk tolerance profile is somewhere on the cowboy end of things. And again, super, super handy to have that there during development, so you can fall back and see, hey, this thing that isn't working, is it not working because of my authentication is messed up or because of something else? So that plain text user, super handy. Anyway, let's consume some messages from a topic. I have a script here that will consume messages from the topic called wikipedia.parsed. And again, just run the script the first time, and maybe the second time through, open it up and see what it's doing. It'll be interesting. You are, after all, here to learn. Now, we've got Kafka Connect set up elsewhere to ingest messages from the IRC channel that contains a global feed of all live Wikipedia edits. Well, there is such an IRC feed in the world. We can connect to the topic, this Wikipedia parse topic, via the SSL SASL port, and it works. But if we try SSL only, that is encryption but no authentication, it doesn't work. Now, we know the broker is listening on the SSL port, so why isn't this working? And why can't the client be authorized via SSL like it can be on SASL? Recall that this client appears to be a super user. We should be able to do what we want, right? Well, the answer is, while the client can authenticate, the client isn't authorized to read data from the topic. In fact, in our authorizer log, we can clearly see the logged authorization failure. And here we see the reason. When we connect via SSL, the username we're using to authenticate is this mess. CN equals client, OU equals test, O equals confluent, L equals Palo Alto, ST equals CAC equals US. Uh, that's great, it reads like poetry, but it's not client, which is the username we configured to be super user. So when we connect via SASL over SSL, at least the command I used in this demo to do that, our config file specifies a username. It has to, it's SASL, and that username is client, which is a super user. When we do it with SSL, not so. Well, let's fix this. Let's authorize that user with its long and rather mellifluous username using this 
fairly complex command. We're running the Kafka ACLs command, which adds an ACL entry to Zookeeper. So we have to point the command to our Zookeeper cluster, tell it that we're adding an entry, specify the topic, and of course, spell out that beautiful principal name. And done. Now it works. And as always, that is enough to get you started. You've seen how to get CP demos set up, gotten a quick idea how to use SSL, SASL, and ACLs. That's encryption, authentication, authorization. Three important concepts in any security, including the Confluent platform. And CP Demo is there for you to look through the scripts, look at the pieces, look at how the Docker containers are set up, there for you to pick apart and study, figure out how to do this for yourself. And there is always more on this topic to learn, so watch this space and read the docs at docs.confluent.io for more.